Welcome to the Spiritual Artist Podcast. This is Chris Miller. I invite you to join me as I interview artists from a variety of disciplines. We'll share powerful stories and lessons learned while making their art. Good day. You're listening to the Spiritual Artist Podcast, and this is Chris Miller, your host. I have so much to share with you in this episode. There's no question that the last few years have been challenging for everybody. There's so many changes in society. People that have gone into the corporate office to work are now working at home. Some people that have worked at home are now working in corporate offices. So life has brought about a lot of changes. And I'll be honest with you, um, I have found myself struggling a little bit before the easel when I entered my studio. And I realized during this process that I really didn't write about emotions very much in my book, The Spiritual Artist. Now, the book talks about all sorts of intellectual explanations of how we get into that state, that creative state of being a spiritual artist. But I really kind of just danced around emotions. Um, I do address them, and I say that you just kind of ride them like a surfer would ride a surfboard. But I think there is a little more to be discussed with this. And so for that, I have decided to bring back uh, a previous interviewer, interviewee, sorry, um, Terry Martin. Terry is not only my husband, but he is a teacher of the Meisner Method, and he is a director, and he has been doing this, I guess, your whole life. And so let me introduce Terry, and we are going to talk about emotions and how they drive the creative process. Um, or do they hinder the creative process? So uh, good morning, Terry. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. If you don't know this, I just thought, said it also. Terry and I have been uh, married for almost 30 years. And so uh, we know each other quite well. And he is very passionate about directing. And he has been that way since I met him more than 29 and a half years ago. He had an earlier episode where he had talked about the Meisner Method. And I want to share with you that it is one of the most listened to episodes on my podcast. Uh, Terry, did you know that? Yeah, yeah, actually, you had told me that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, so I think this is really interesting to come back and talk about emotions and, um, and how, they, how they work with the creative process. Because as you know, my book is about getting in that state, and I call it the state of receiving direction from a higher power, getting into that state of creativity. But there are days, and I'll be honest, like uh, the last few weeks where I felt a little beat down and, and had some negative emotions. So how do, you, how do you address emotions when you teach this to acting students? And how can you use emotions to enhance the creative process or avoid emotions anyway? Let's go back a little bit. I mean, let's talk about what um, my particular creative discipline is, and that's acting or teaching acting. One of the most important things that you have to understand when you're talking about acting is that feelings or emotions, um, however you want to des describe each of those things, are what we use to communicate and express it is through our feelings and our emotions that we're able to express and tell the story. One of the things that we talk a lot about in the Meisner Technique is that we are not there to make up the words. The words are given to us by a playwright or a screenwriter. Um, so it's our job to interpret those. And interpretation can be defined in many ways. But the thing to remember is interpretation is always your own personal interpretation of whatever the story or the given circumstance is that you have been given by the playwright or the screenwriter. If our emotions are the methods that we use to be expressive and, and how we bring our creative input into the telling of a story, then we have to understand them deeply. And I think one of the most important things that you have to understand is that they're not static, that emotions, um, I actually mentioned this to you last night when we were sort of talking about this, that if you take the E off of emotion, the word is motion. 
to me means that it is a, it is a movement. The the things that we're feeling, the things that we're expressing, have to be a movement. Um, and I think that any artist has to understand that that emotion moves through them um, and is not a static block that we can express as one solid thing. Does that make sense? It does on an intellectual level. Yeah. But then funny, there's the emotional level. Um, and when we are in those emotions, or for me, sometimes they're just so overwhelming, I can't almost see around them. If that makes sense. Well, yes. And that as an actor, that can happen a lot. Emotion can be surprising. Um, you know, we hear the word triggered often today in our society that you're triggered by something and that brings up a particular emotion for you, usually negative, but it triggers something in you. Um, as an actor, what that says to me is that you have sensitivity and that you feel deeply. And as an artist, those are really good things. It's important as an artist to have deep feelings about things, uh, to be sensitive to the world around you, to also be suggestible meaning something can come up for you, for you and it suggests a something for you and it makes you feel something. Now, if we talk about being overwhelmed by it, I think that the overwhelm feeling comes from trying to control it. And to be more specific, trying to stop it or trying to make it go away. I don't like the way this is making me feel, so I'm going to stop it or I'm going to hold it. It's like damming up a stream. If you dam up a stream, it gets bigger. It turns into something more. In fact, um, uh, just this morning, I was um, uh, watching uh, or following one of my former students who now is an, a, a Meisner teacher in New York City, Ted Wold. And he had posted, and I'm not sure where he got it from, but he had posted a, a video of a guy describing holding up a glass of water. And we pick up a glass of water and it's easy to pick up. And if we hold it for a second, it's light and it's easy to hold. But the longer that we hold that glass of water, the harder it gets to hold, to hold on to. Uh, you become tense and it becomes heavy and it becomes harder and harder until you become paralyzed with the fact and the effort of trying to hold up that glass of water. And really to relieve that, all you have to do is put the glass of water down. To me, emotion is like that as an actor. You, you should not damn it up or hold it back or try to control it. If you are a creative artist, you should welcome it and let it move through you because it's taking you emotion, motion. It's taking you somewhere else. And it's, it, it, it is what is beyond where you stand or feel or are now that the new creative impulse lies that's where it lies but if you hold on to what you're feeling let it overwhelm you paralyze you freeze you and i said freeze not free freeze you up then you'll never get to that next impulse that is the deeper next step of the creative impulse and the creative expression that is there for you, that spirit is bringing you to, that is coming through you as it can only come through you because you as the artist are the instrument. You know, you, you can talk about breath, breathing into it and letting it breathe through you, but all of those are intellectual 
intellectual things. And to me, it's ultimately a decision to acknowledge that emotion is like mercury. It is never static. It's always moving. It should be always moving. You can be laughing and crying at the same time, but you can't do that. You can't have that beautiful cathartic moment if you're trying to control it and make it something that you want it to be instead of letting it be something else. We can have lots of discussions about technique and what the actor needs to do to be able to find an emotion to, a mat, to match a given circumstances or, or a story that they're trying to tell. That has to do with imagination. But, but, but you can only get there if you can embrace the fact that this emotion is constantly in motion and you should let it be and welcome that. Well, you know, the, uh, you said so many things there that are interesting. And, and um, I love the part about you have to kind of go with it to find where that next, that creative spark leads you, that it's leading you somewhere. And um, I, I, I was thinking just before we did this interview, um, I went into the studio and painted. And I remembered how growing up um, in Pittsburgh, uh, there, it's, it's in a rain belt. And starting in the fall, it, it rains a lot. It's overcast and it's cloudy. And I found myself, I think I'm one of those people that is sensitive to light and lack of light makes me get moody. And so I recall my whole childhood that it, when fall came, I would get all moody and, and depressed. But my way through that, my way through that was to go find a sad song or to, to play some music that maybe, and I'm going to admit this to my listeners, uh, at the time I might smoke a cigarette or have a glass of wine and I would play a sad song. And that song would move me through the emotion and it gave me a place to go. And I would tell people that and they would say, oh, you're just miring, you're just, you're just layering yourself into that emotion. And that's not what I was doing at all. It wasn't that I was just sitting in the middle of it. But actually, by doing that, I was letting myself walk through it. And, and sure enough, after I listened to a couple songs in a row, it started leading me to, to, a, to my next place, to my next place to be. And, and that's kind of what I think you're saying. And, and it also reminds me of that, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but that when something happens to you, saying yes to it. Yeah, no, you, you, you have to, to, to say yes to it. You have to say yes to, to everything that comes up for you. I mean, I am teaching acting to fifth graders right now. It's what I'm doing in my full-time job at a, um, at a, an independent school. And I teach fifth graders, um, drama every every day every afternoon and there are most of these children have never been in any kind of drama class before so I'm making introductions to to improv and the basic of improv is the idea of yes and you never say no in an improv you never put out a negative you always say yes and you know Today, we're going to have class at McDonald's. You don't want a student that says, no, I don't like McDonald's. In an improv, you would say, yes, and then we'll play on the playground. And that leads the story moving forward. So yes, you have to embrace and accept everything that's there. Yes, and embracing, embracing what is coming up for you as a creative artist is really important. Because again, I go back to, to that, that whole idea that if you're, if you're damming up the flow um, of, of what's coming through you, in any way, if you're cutting it off or denying it or trying to hold on to it, you are cutting yourself off to so many possibilities that are on the other side or that are in the future. Um, you're, you're holding yourself in now, which we always want to be in the now, but the now is constantly moving. There's now and now and now and now. There's not now and now is the same because yeah, it's not the same right right it's that it's it's that taking that dialogue further uh, painters will all, all oftentimes say um there is no mistake 
there's always a happy accident because whatever you do on the canvas, it leads you somewhere else. And you might, if you, if you judge it and say, oh, I just ruined this painting, you freeze because judgment, judgment is a, is, is a, a value, right? It's, it's saying, it's kind of like you're trying to stop it. I judge this as bad and I stop it. Right. But if, if you just look at it and go, oh, isn't that interesting? I just too, took too much paint and hit a blob on the canvas. Where will that lead me? Where will that lead me? Well, you will have not learned. You will, will have not learned anything from the from 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 the moment, you know, because you will have made a judgment and 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 made a harsh negative judgment about what it was, uh, uh, and that is a, a form of beating yourself up as a creative artist because you're you're putting a judgment on the, on on the creative impulse, and you you will not have learned anything from the moment because. Whereas if you look at it, as you say, isn't that interesting? Maybe I want to do that again because it's so interesting or, oh, that's interesting. I don't want to do that again because that is not what I want this to be. And in acknowledging the reality of whatever that moment was, you make conscious and discerning decisions about where your creative um, um, impulse is going, you know, what direction you want to go with it, you know, that's the balance, right? You know, this staying in this creative of flow and, and trying to be in the moment and constantly expressing what's coming through you and yet being discerning at the same time. Um, it's this balance of this, this intellectual judgment that is needed to, I think, reach the level of a certain um, artist um, level. You want to reach a certain level of perfection. It's never perfect. That's not what I mean. But a, a, a certain level of quality that you want to maintain a certain quality in your work. And that comes from discernment making constant decisions but that's that's being able to interact very very specifically in the moment i mean when you're when you are interacting with the with the pain on the canvas at every single moment i as an actor or my students as actors have to be interacting with every single moment that is there um, they can't make a decision about what the scene is going to be specifically before it starts because you don't know you can't know you have to be open to the moment you know and the mom all moments are not perfect moments you know I, I keep we keep saying moments and that 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 is bringing to mind it's heavy on my mind right now because uh just yesterday the magnif magnificent artist Stephen Sondheim died and um, such a powerful poet to me in terms of, of, of the work that he put out in the world and how it spoke to me and taught me to be an artist. And his words were so powerful. And I, I, it, it brings to mind the, a song from Into the Woods called A uh, Moment in the Woods, where um, the one character says, if life were made of moments, even now and then a bad one, but if life were only moments, then you'd never know you had one. So you have to experience the bad before you even know what good is. Well, I, I, you know, I love Sondheim. He's my favorite. And uh, I agree. I think um, we have to have that perspective uh, there, you know, and just go with it. Just go with it. And, and you're right, when we experience something bad, uh, maybe not look at it with judgment, but just feel it, feel it, respond to it and move on to the next and the next right. and the next. Um, because we are not, none of us are staying the same. We can't freeze time and we can't stay where we were. And um, it is a tragic, not tragic. I mean, it's, it's part of life that we've lost him, but we were so blessed that he wrote so many beautiful shows with such wonderful, thoughtful lyrics that will forever leave a mark. And I think uh, that's a true artist. 
yeah, they're they're with us forever, and we'll hopefully and and I'm sure speak to artists in the future, just like his shows and his music and his words spoke to us. Um, uh, but it does make you sad when a when a soul like that leaves the world, even as thankful as you are that they have left so such a magnificent mark on on the world and you know i can say my life because of the the stories and how they have affected me right no definitely um and he taught and he looked at the creative process in so many different ways yeah. you know sunday in the park with george is looking at painting which is you know but i do think the creative process has that similarity i think you can listen to a story just like I can interview you and we can talk about acting, I can see how that relates to painting. And he obviously could see how painting related to theater. Uh, uh, to, to, any kind of, to any kind of artist. And of course, if, 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 if you're a deep artist, oh, again, that has a judgment on it and I don't mean it to sound judgmental. If you're an artist and you know deep in your soul that you're an artist, then I think you can look at something like Sunday in the Park and say, yes, he's writing about a painter and he's writing about George Seurat, who was a magnificent impressionist artist, but he's also writing about life and, and how we have to make decisions about what we care about. And when we make decisions about what we care about, we have to make sacrifices. And sometimes those sacrifices can be painful but they all could also can be so glorious. And the fact that we have this opportunity to be who we are fully in every single moment. And um, that, that balance of give and take is, is um, and that's what I was referring to earlier about, about this balance of judgment and, and, and what we have to, emotionally the emotional cost sometimes of being an artist um i personally don't think it has to be that way if you realize that it's all just movement and it's not static then there is no emotional cost but if you have deep feelings let's say you're triggered by a story, if I'm talking about an actor, I'm triggered deeply by this, by a story that I'm telling and the role that I'm living emotionally um, every night while I'm doing that play. It would be foolish and naive of me to think that it would not leave some residue in my spirit, uh, in my body in my soul that I have lived that emotion, um, it leaves a mark, you know? Um, I, I don't think that that's a bad thing, but I think you have to be a certain type of artist to be able to accept that and say, yeah, when I tell this story, when I write, when I'm, when I paint this painting in the mood that I am in now, and I'm letting all of this, whatever is triggering the emotion in me, come through the paintbrush and the paint onto this canvas. It's going to be on the canvas but there's something, there's going to be something left in me that I experienced this thing, you know? And that's, isn't that what it means to be alive? Oh, definitely. It reminds me of something you said to me months ago, um, and I actually wrote it down, but you just led up to it. So I have to say it. You said that, you know, consciousness leaves a mark and, um, I think when we approach any craft, whether we're making pottery or jewelry or painting or singing or acting, we have to bring our consciousness to it. And um, so, you know, when you say a good artist, I think what you're trying to say is a conscious artist, you know, someone that's really conscious about their craft. 
that's present and interacting. And that's, that's what I think the spiritual artist is all about, you know, being, bringing your consciousness to it, letting that spirit flow through you and whatever you make is going to be individualized because it is coming through you. No other person is going to let, no other person is going to respond to that emotion and those feelings like you will. Right. I think that reflects back to maybe a little bit to also to the, to, to the first podcast that we, that you and I did, and we talked about intentionality. And I think in many ways, um, the consciousness that you're talking about, about an artist being conscious is about an, an artist being intentional, uh, you know, making a decision to put their consciousness, their attention on a specific thing. At, at a particular moment, you know, and that, you know, when you put that kind of intentionality on anything, whether it's my putting all of my attention on you, like I'm doing right now, and all of my in, attention on this conversation, the, it is the creativity and the um, power of this moment is multiplied because of that intentionality. And I think that's, I agree with you. I think that's what I mean when I say a good artist or a great artist, it's about their ability to put their attention on um, a very specific craft and in, in a very specific moment or a very specific story and to be able to do that consistently. Uh, I, I say this to my fifth graders all the time that um, if nothing else, I want them to leave their time with me. And I only get them for about eight to 10 weeks. I get every fifth grader for about eight to 10 weeks that what I want them to leave after with, after having spent some time with me is the understanding that they have the power to make the, the decision that they're going to put all of their attention on one thing. It's not haphazard. They can choose it, whatever that may be. I can put all of my attention on this math test. I can put all of my attention on kicking that soccer ball. I can put all of my attention on this other person while we're doing this improv exercise. But I have that power. If a fifth grader can leave my class knowing that they have that kind of willpower, um, yeah, like I've done, I've I've done something important. Wonderful, wonderfully important. It took me half my life, yeah. maybe more. <laughs> yeah. Really, maybe more to to learn about the importance of that. And uh, I talk about that in my book about truly listening to someone else and being present and truly listening. And how rare that is. And mm -hmm. I spent most of my life not. I spent most of my life talking. Mm -hmm. um, but to truly listen. Uh, I want to go back to, to something you said and we both talked about. Because you said that emotion can move you forward. And, and, but what happens? So what would you do? How would you tell your actor? So you get a student. You get a fifth grader that comes in. And they don't want to... They don't want to approach that emotion. They, 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 you're doing a scene, you give them some lines, and they're just, they're, they're holding it. You know how we talked, you talked about earlier how you can hold and resist it. They're resisting the anger. Say there's a scene where there's some anger and the person, and, and they're acting out a scene. How do, what do you tell them? How do they? Oh, well, first of all, I want to clarify, I would never, I would never, I, I, I would never, the fifth graders are too young for me to 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 push or encourage or or talk to them about emotions too much at all. I don't really talk to to my fifth graders about emotions, you know, because they're they're all they're all over the place and 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 <laughs> and and super sensitive in 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 a way that is oh my god, it's the beginning of middle school. We all remember how hellish that can be <laughs> you know what i want them to do is just be able to be silly and have fun and 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 realize that they can make the decision to have fun uh without a lot of pressure 
Now, if I'm talking about in, in my professional acting classes, if I'm reach an actor, I'm teaching an actor and they are um, resistant. Um, typically what happens is a, a, an actor um, has through their life and often as if they're prof a, a professional have developed a mask or a facade. Um, and they are unwilling to take that mask off. And that's an indication of them trying to control their emotions. They're trying to be in control of every single moment, which means if they're in control of every single moment, they are not willing or able to show vulnerability of any kind. Or if they do, it is itself a facade. It's not true and authentic. So what I try to do with an actor is just let them realize and, and coach them to take off the mask, be real. You know, it's not, in, 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 it's not about being liked. This is not, we're not, we're not talking about being liked or um, playing into any kind of social conventions or anything like that. You know, I always talk about, impulses you know you 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 we all have the impulse and i may have said this in the other podcasts and i apologize if i did but one of the things i i say a lot is look we all have the impulse to ram that car that cuts us off on the tollway we there's that slight impulse that we have about how dare you and i can just ram you out, out of the way we don't do that because we know the consequences of that and it's part of being in a civilized society that we maintain those societal conventions that are appropriate and civil and peaceful. Those things don't serve an artist. Because what we have, we, if we do, we, we, we are constantly editing and denying our impulses. So what I try to do is to, 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 to create a, an atmosphere where they realize that the impulses, it's just an impulse. I may not like, I might be acting with you and I may not like the way you raise your eyebrows at me. It has nothing to do with me except my intentional attention on you. It makes, it does something to me. Now, I can intellectually sit there and talk myself out of it. No, it's not about you. His raising his M eyebrow like that has nothing to do with you. It's just an acting class. This is just an acting exercise. You're, now, where am I now? I'm all in my head talking about myself, and I'm missing moments after moments after moments of things that are happening because I'm trying to talk myself out of or hold myself in a box that is not needed. Hmm. I, I can get pissed off because you raised your eyebrow at me. And then when I express that, however I express it, it may just be a little curtness. It may, who knows how it comes out. <clears throat> it may just be a, a, a dirty look. I can tell by the way you respond to that, whether I was right about how you raised your eyebrow. And then the, no, the next moment is, oh, now I feel like shit because, excuse my language, I feel, I, I feel bad because I responded to something that is silly. So now I'm vulnerable and I'm embarrassed and I'm ashamed because of something that, that I did that. And, oh, how beautiful is that? That color, I would never have been able to get to that color or that vulnerability or that, 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 that moment had I held back and controlled and defined the moment of the eyebrow? Just let so it be. I, so what I'm hearing is um, control. Like there is it, part of the creative process is letting go of that control. Yeah. You know, one of the, one of the, one of the things that I say, like, especially when we get it further in and I say, we start working on scene work and acting is that, you know, I'll give an actor a scene and perhaps it's a, 
an argument between a couple, a breakup scene or something like that. And an actor will immediately decide that that scene is about a fight. So the tone of the scene from beginning to end is a fight. It has no color. It has no level. It's one thing. And, and what I hope the Meisner training has done for them and the working from moment to moment and, 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 and being able to be vulnerable is that they will let themselves play it moment to moment. And it's not one color and it's not about a fight. It's it, there may, there's tension in it. Sure. But how many times in real life in the middle of a fight, just something funny happened and both people are laugh about something or giggle about something. And then something else happens and the fight or the tension continues in a different color or a different way. If you as an actor or any kind of artist make a decision about what something has to be instead of playing it moment to moment, then all of those possibilities are gone. You would never be able to find that laughter in any true and authentic way because you've made a decision before you've even started what it's supposed to be. It's like an artist a painter deciding and then i'm sure there are plenty of painters that like this just like <laughs> there are plenty of actors who make a decision before they ever put the brush to the canvas this is what this painting is going to look like oh yeah <laughs> i know you and i know that's not the kind of painter you are nor the kind of artist you want to be that's not the kind of actor that i want to be it was never the kind of actor that i wanted to be nor is it the kind of acting that I enjoy watching. Mm. That's uh, I was talking to an artist two weekends ago at the show and he asked me how he could improve his booth and he had lots of different styles. And I said to him, oh, well, maybe you should present just one style. And he, he came back and, and, and in a way he chastised me because that's not what you do. When you're conscious, you let all that come out of you. And he has those, he has several different styles because he's being in the moment, he's being present, he's being conscious, and he's not one note. And and it's sad when commercial, the commercial market tries to force us to be, you know, like you see it, an actress being slotted in the same role over and over again, because that's yeah. they that, that's what they see her as, you know. And, and it's, it's, it's so limiting because as a creative person, I think that's what we're talking about as a conscious artist, you want to be experimenting with so many different new things and constantly stretching your, your wings and stretching your capabilities and being yeah. in the moment. Yeah. Well, the, the moment. to me that uh, the, uh, uh, as an artist, that's where the joy comes <clears throat> from being, you, you, you said, uh, you, you know, you, you you use the metaphor or the simile of surfing before it, it's like surfing you know you can't predict how big the wave is going to be or when it's going to come if you did you'd ride two and and then you'd be bored and you'd go home it's the uh, it's the joy of the unexpected it's the joy of the anticipation it's the joy of figuring out how to do it in this moment that keeps you doing it otherwise why bother exactly um you know that's why someone say oh you know that style sells do it again and i'm like i've done it uh, i've done it and right. i don't want to do that style again and then i think all any any listeners any creative any craft that you're in can look at your work and you should always see that it's constantly evolving. And if you look at what you did five years ago, it should be different from what you did 10 years ago, as opposed to 15 years ago, because you should be evolving and growing artistically. And if you see, if you see a pattern, like in the last five or 10 years, you're just doing the same thing over and over again, you are in a rut. <laughs> you're stuck, but <laughs> all right. What's you know, the me, there's always a, but, uh, -huh. but, 
perhaps it's not a rut. Perhaps there's a lot more difference to it that they see that you can't. You know, that's, you, you know, that, that, that's, that's the challenge. Sometimes even discerning artists like you and I can miss the discernment that another artist is putting into it. It may not be apparent to us. Well, you know me, I, I'll counter and say that as long as they see the difference, because I said, if you look at your work and don't see it evolving, then you're in a rut. Yeah. But you are right. You're right. And that's where you get these artists that just they become obsessed with a simple shape or a texture and they just keep exploring the different ways. And and I, for one, have gotten ex uh, obsessed with line work and, and how a, is the line sharp edged or soft or deckled or inverted or, you know, and I can go on and on where I just get obsessed by that simple edge between one color and another. Mm -hmm. And how do they hit each other? Do they hit each other? Or is there underlying color? So I agree. I agree with what we're just we're saying. Um, but you should always see that movement in your own work. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And get it. You should always feel that. And not only is it seeing it, but it's feeling that excitement when you do and it. And only imagine that if you're not, you're really frustrated. Yeah. But maybe not. Maybe not. You know. Yeah. So so what, what we talked about, because uh, I entered this with my preconception of what I wanted to discuss, and of course, we moved and go and go all sorts of places, but emotions in general, you just walk toward them. We need to walk toward them and through them. We need to welcome them. Right. You know, every, every one, every color, every intensity, because yeah. it's only, because emotions are only momentary. They're only momentary. Yeah. Like as he said, says, it's in the moment. It's in the moment. moment. And they're only momentary. They only become not momentary when you decide to hold it back. You decide to hold it back. Like you're holding back a, a team of horses. I'm not going to let these horses run. I'm going to hold them back. And, and when you make the decision to hold them back, you're stuck. You're essentially stuck. You're not going. Right. You're not moving forward. You're not moving backwards. You're 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 stuck. Or if you're moving forward, it's very tense and very without a flow. Let the horses run. What's the worst that could happen? You cry. Exactly. As long as you recognize, like you said earlier, that they're not permanent. That they will move. It's knowing that. And so I would tell, I tell my listeners to remember that. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I tell actors in acting class, you know, get really angry. We're not going to think, what do you think? What, what's the worst going to happen? You think we're going to call the guys with the white coats? No, you get really angry and, 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 you know, the, the ground is not going to open up and swallow you. The same thing. If you cry, if you get vulnerable and you cry, nobody's going to judge you. I, for one, am going to applaud you. Thank, you're, uh, thank God you're a sensitive artist. You have deep feelings. You have to. That's your job. As an artist, having deep feeling is your job. And then this is when I get kind of a hard-ass teacher. This is when I say, and if you're not up to the job, find something else to do. <laughs> Well, that's a little judgy, but no, I, well, I agree with you. But sometimes yeah. as, a, as a teacher, you have to, you have to say, you have to, you, you don't have to. I, I'm not ever mean. All I'm saying is that sometimes you have to realize this is part of the job. This is part of being an artist. Again, if we go back to Sunday in the Park. This is what he was talking about, Sunday in the Park. There's a, there's a cost. You have to be willing to stand in that emotion mm. it's going to move through you but you have to be willing to stand in it and if you're not willing to stand in the the tension what it takes to make that painting what it takes to live that role then if it's 
<laughs> you were talking about comfortability last night. If it's so uncomfortable, then don't do it. It's right. your choice. If it's too uncomfortable for, for you to play Blanche Dubois in Streetcar Named Desire, then don't play it. But you have to be willing to step into the fire. I, I just, I, I love this story. About it. One, of the, one of the things that drives me crazy about actors who don't get that is the, the sigh. What I mean is they're, they're playing a scene and it builds up and it's got great tension in it and it's, it needs to be maintained. Maybe the tension even needs to be maintained through a blackout so that that tension is left with the audience when we go into the next scene, whether on film or on stage. But actors always, not always, but many actors want to re resolve the tension before they move on. And they do it by a sigh. We're, we're tense, we're tense, we're tense. And then an actor will go. <sighs> Everything they've just worked for is blown. You know, stand in it, hold it. Well, definitely. Um, I think that's where, once again, it gets back to what I think is that these are, these are truths to life. I don't think you can resist it. You might think you can resist it and walk away. And, you know, like you said, an artist, you, you choose it or walk away. But I think you, you're going to, if you walk away, it stays with you. Well, it definitely stays with you. It definitely stays with you. And uh, as an artist, you've lost something. You've lost a great opportunity. So the spiritual truth for me, the spiritual lesson in that is that we have to, we have to keep going, keep walking through it. And, and, and all, all the people um, listening in on this podcast, the last couple of years have been a challenge for everybody at the, with, with COVID and economy and everything else. But we just, you got to keep walking through it and feeling it completely and processing through it. Yeah. You know, and, and you take that energy to your craft. You take that energy to the studio, to, to, wherever you're working on whatever creative craft or discipline you do, you just take it and, and use it and it will out picture in that work, you know? Well, it, 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 it's going to lead us to something, <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to lead us to something and artists always find a way to find, to, to, to let these things and not just artists, people spiritual people find a way of 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 letting these things that are so difficult and so painful lead us to something beautiful you mm -hmm. know it always leads to something beautiful you know so let's just get on with finding the beauty you know, let's just get on with it. Let's let, let, let's find it, you know, feel it, be pissed off, be scared, be, be, be hurt, be mad, but don't stay that way. To quote sign time again, don't worry yeah. about where you're going. Just move on. Just move on. Well, Terry, I, I thank you for this, um, wonderful interview because it's exactly what I needed to remind myself of, you know, and, and uh, continue to go back into the studio and, and take this, these emotions and use them, use them. So I uh, appreciate you letting me pull you back in to cover this. And I think I might actually go back and weave a chapter and add a chapter to my next publication. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Cause mm -hmm. it never ends. Does it? No. <laughs> There's, a, there, there's always more to say, always more to feel. Well, thank you for being on the podcast and I'm, I will talk to you soon. All right. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for listening to the spiritual artist podcast. Whether you're following the show on Apple podcasts, Spotify, or Google podcasts, make sure you choose the subscribe button. So you'll receive new segments when they're released. Plus, check out my new book, The Spiritual Artist, now available on Amazon.com. In the meantime, be still, listen, and know that you are a spiritual artist.